Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. And in this episode of our podcast, I'd like to talk about how to best and most effectively work with a consultant like our company here at BrightPath. So how do you best work with a consultant? Now clearly as you're headed into a consulting engagement, you have identified some sort of problem in your organization. Maybe you're seeking to evaluate your current resilience capabilities. Maybe you're looking to uh, improve a certain aspect of your program that you're trying to mature, or you're looking for some different ways of thinking about something. Maybe you're just looking for coaching for one of your direct reports, or even for yourself to help you improve your program. But no matter what you're doing, there are some key things that can help you ensure that you have a successful consulting engagement. So I'm going to give you about 10 points here to consider. The first one is just to have clear and open communication from the start. What are you trying to do here? What are the objectives, the scope and expectations? How will you work together? How will you communicate? How quickly should you expect a response to questions that you ask? But you want to define these things early on to ensure alignment. Our expertise comes into play once we really fully understand your challenges and goals. But to some extent, we can help you craft those expectations. And we certainly have a way that in which we like to operate that we can share in these negotiation conversations at the beginning of an engagement, leading into an engagement. The second is you're hiring an expert. You're hiring an organization that has specialized expertise in resilience in this case. And recognizing our team brings in-depth knowledge of crisis management, resilience, business continuity, IT disaster recovery. These are things we've done for 20, 30 years. And the team assigned to help you likely has a significant, significantly more experience than you and your team do. So you really want to be open to um, a different way of thinking, open to some very candid feedback on where your program stands and how you can uh, look at these expert recommendations and tailored strategies for your organization. The third is to just be transparent. Um, the full You want to have full transparency about your internal challenges and politics and risks and gaps to allow your consulting partner to provide more accurate and effective solutions as you work along. Hiding information or trying to put the best spin on things will not have the best reflection. It will not get you to the best result when it comes to the work that your consulting partner is doing. Number four is just continuing along that, that theme of trust and collaboration, but a successful consulting relationship is built on that kind of trust. Treating the consultant as an extension of your team, as a valued partner, will foster better collaboration. Number five is to engage in continuous learning. That working with your consulting partner to not only resolve your current challenges, but to enhance your own long-term resilience, uh, really the, your long-term resilience capabilities through learning and knowledge transfer is really the type of relationship, the type of, of continuous learning relationship that you want to have. Number six is to value data-driven experience decisions. Um, our organization relies upon data and evidence-based strategies. Um, when we're conducting a program evaluation, for example, I'm not just interviewing stakeholders and listening to what they say, but I'm looking for the documentation, the artifacts that prove the things that they say are happening. Um, that kind of data um, is important. So being able to provide relevant data and artifacts and being open to adjusting based on those insights is pretty critical. Number seven is just flexibility. Um, consulting engagements will often require adjustments as you move through the engagement and as new information emerges. Um, remaining flexible will really help you optimize those outcomes. Number eight is timely feedback and iteration. And as a consultant, this is probably the one area where I think we get the most frustrated because we move very quickly. Uh, we produce documentation and deliverables on a very rapid clip and our competitors do the same. You want to provide regular and timely feedback on those deliverables to allow the, your consulting partner to fine tune their strategies. Uh, to be able to iterate rapidly to get to the best possible answer 
for the challenges that you've asked the consulting partner to address. That ensures the project stays on track and it meets your evolving needs. Number nine is maximizing ROI. Really focusing on the long-term benefits of working with a consultant, um, looking at how you can work with them to develop sustainable practices and documentation that will stand the test of time. And again, a lot of this depends on being able to provide feedback and iterate rapidly and work with the consultant to move your deliverables to a good final state that best fits your challenges. And lastly, just commit to action. Once the plan is or strategy is in place, ensuring that your team commits to the execution and support that is necessary to put those recommendations into play. Consultants can guide you, they can help build the thing for you, but at the end of the day, you have to support and manage and sponsor that implementation and the execution of that program to make sure that you're achieving the results that you're looking for. So these are some thoughts about how we have worked effectively with clients in the past. If we can ever assist you with your resilience program, you can contact us at brightpath.com slash contact or via email at contact at brightpath.com. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.